Okay, so tonight I'm going to try to get some sort of argument passing going to the called programs, like the editor or the calculator or whatever else is called from the kernel. I want to try to get like the, the normal C, int main, int arg C, character, star star arg V kind of thing going. I'll add the arg C and the arg V parameters to the kernel and pass them to a called program. Just kind of get something basic like that set up and see if we can't... Um, you know, like pass a file name to the editor and have it automatically load that file, or maybe pass an expression within a quoted string as one whole token, we'll say, from the command line to the calculator and have it run that automatically or something. Or we can just add in the argc argv to the kernel and call it a day. We'll see. I just want to do something small like that today, so that's what I'm going to try to do. All right, so we'll get to the uh, programming here. Just making sure I was in the right directory and stuff was set up. This will mainly be in the kernel. We might have one or two other files we mess with, but we'll see. Uh, from last time, I'm not sure I need print types anymore. So let's just see if that compiles without it. I don't think it will. And by that, I mean I do think it will. <laughs> let's make sure the printf and everything still works, and I think we're good to go. So yeah, I kind of want the int argc and argv to work like passing it on the command line, say, to the editor right here. So if we do editor, uh, the argument count for a normal argc for a C program would be 1. I think it's actually 1 based indexing. I feel like I said 0 based on one of the last videos, but it's 1 based indexing. That's easy to implement. And then to get the argument, it's basically going to be a string that corresponds to whatever token like the user entered that's sort of space delimited. I guess unless we do within strings, then the whole string might count as a token if I want to do that. But that might be a little bit later. But if we call something like the editor and call it with a file, you know, file name, then this would be argc1, this would be argc2, and then these would be strings or character pointers pointing to, you know, the character array strings in the argument vector, the argv. So argv offset zero, the character pointer, would be would point to editor, and, and argv1 would point to file name. So we can access those within a C program, like with argc and argv. And that's kind of what I want to uh, do with this today. So, okay. Um, if I don't remember other things that we're not using, like uh, stuff like this that I want to get rid of, <laughs> And the smap entry is only used within print physical memory info, so actually I'm going to put that down there as well. Because that'll just make it a little bit, uh, put that at the top. Just keep it where it's actually used, that's all. Make things a little bit tidier, but okay. In the kernel, I'll say at the bottom of all the variables we have here, even though I'm using the specific, you know, standard int types, uh, for this, just to go with traditional C stuff and not be too wild and out there, I'm going to go with int argc and character pointer argv. I am going to put this in a buffer, and I think I'm going to, at least right now, start out doing this similar to, I, I think, how POSIX shell or bash takes in arguments as far as the total number that you're limited to, or maybe batch files in Windows. I think they're only limited to like 1 through 9 for the argument count, so I think they're only limited to 10 arguments like dollar one through dollar nine so i'm just gonna make 10 pointers here and we can make them all null that's fine we'll fill them in a sort of easy way to get the argument vector and simplify the kernel i'm thinking of sort of getting rid of these tokens things here you know all these files that i won't need i can simplify a uh, command string let's set that to zero as well this may or may, i may or may not make command string and command string pointer into characters i guess we can do that that's fine we'll be entering in text Taking in text from the user. But I want to set argv sort of equal to certain offsets within command string that will correspond to where the tokens are because the whole 256 byte array here is what the user enters in at the shell at the prompt. If they type in something like editor, that'll be at offset zero within command string. Or if we get rid of space, then it can be at whatever offset. Just the first non space character will be, you know, the commander file that the user's input into to run. And then they put a space and then another word. Word meaning some number of token, some number of characters that is that are not spaces uh, delimited by spaces. And the next one of those would be like the file name if we're calling the editor with that, or like an expression to call the calculator to calculate, <laughs> or something like that. And and that would be at a at a further offset in the command string. So if the user entered something like, well, say editor, editor and file name. 
then this E would be at offset zero, and this F would be at offset, you know, zero plus seven. So it'd be like at offset seven. So we can say argv zero points to this, and argv one points to this, and we would have the strings, as long as we null terminate if we want to do sort of C string processing. So I'm going to try to go forward with that, uh, if that makes sense, hopefully. And that'll be down where we get the tokens. I'm going to change the token code, which I think is all right here. So before we get all the token, before we tokenize with the user input, narrative argc, C, I'm going to set argument counter to zero. Just say reset argument count. And argv is zero. I probably should set that as well. So I can do that. I'll try to do that. Mem set argv zero. I guess size of argv. See if that works or not. Does that compile? That should be all right. Okay, so while we're not null, we want to skip white space between tokens, and if alphanumeric or underscore, I might do this a simpler way. What I'm really doing, and maybe an idi a more idiomatic C way, would be checking, for this, checking if the character is alpha or is numeric, which I think is is digit in C. Yeah, it's called is digit. These are in the C type header, so I might make a C type header for these, even if I don't use them all right now. But really, I'm checking these, and then it's either is space or it's is white space. Um, I don't remember. It's not is space. Man is space. Yeah, okay. So that counts. Horizontal tab, vertical tab, new line, F. What is F? Form feed. And carriage return, and just a space. I may want, if I do this, I may want to include backspace just for me but what this really is doing is this is checking is space and then this is checking if it's alpha numeric or some special character but i think i want to make this simpler and just check if not space or not is space and that would be easier to get token pointers and things um than having to do like a bunch of comparisons here although i guess we can just shift the comparisons and abstract them to another function called is space but so i want to have something like while is space if I want to do this, command string pointer, and then I do the same thing, command string pointer plus plus, and then we would have, while not is space, we'd say this is the current token that we found entered by the user. But okay, the, the way I did this in testing was, yeah, I checked if it was a space, and then if it was a space, I set it equal to zero. So I set it equal to null, which is not great if we want to do something like command history later, but right now to make it simpler and to make sure that strings are null terminated without further processing, we could just set space is equal to null in the user input line. So we're going to set it all like, we'll reset it to null anyway when we get the next line of input from, from this line up here. So should be okay. Um, so, okay, this is assuming we have this function, of course, but if we do, we'll set these to null, and then when we find something that isn't a space, um, what we can do at this point, we would have found something that isn't a space, so found next non-space character, start of next uh, input token argument. So this will be the next argument entered by the user, so what I mean by that is we can set argv, whatever number we're on, equal to wherever we're at in the user input, which would be the command string, which at this point is the command string pointer. So we should be able to do this, or no, dereferencing would be a character. We want a character pointer, so it would be command string pointer. So at this point, this, this will point to the first non-space character, or the next non-space character, and that'll be the next token, or the next argument that the user entered. So you know, we want to calculate some expression here. Oh, this isn't good because it's quoted, but you know, if they did this and this would be, maybe they put a bunch of spaces before they typed anything in, we'd skip all the spaces and the C would be the first non-space character. So this would be the start of this argument or this token. So I'm going to add that to the argument array. And then while it's not a space, I kind of want to skip over the next ones, but we also want to end if we hit the end, so maybe I should add another thing to this. 
while not is space and and we're not at the end would be command string pointer not equal null. Okay, so if it's not a space character and we're not at null, then we would increment till we get to the next space character. And then we'll say we'll not do this stuff. <laughs> and let's say we don't do this stuff to keep it simple. We'd search through till we get the next non space, add that, we reach a space. It's not zero, we reach the next non-space, we add it to the vector, we reach a space, or we reach the end of the string, then we end and go on. So that should be all right. Uh, we don't want zero here, we want the next argument, which we can have an argc and use as a counter, and then we can automatically increment it, since argc can be one-based. So our first argument would be at offset zero and arg v, but arg c would be one after getting the first argument. So I think that should work. If we find two arguments, arg c would be two, arg v would have offsets zero and one for those arguments. That makes sense. So I think this will work. Um, and I think that's all we need to do. So saying that, we should check if stuff actually works by something like print file table. So instead of tokens here, we can get the first argument, which makes this um, actually conceptually pretty simple to move on, which is nice. What we're actually doing, comparing tokens here, is comparing tokens offset zero. So the first token in the, I think, 50 character array. Yeah, all the way here. So if we store everything in the argument vector, which is just offsets into the string that the user input, we can just compare to the first argument that we stored in the argument vector. So that might read a little bit easier. That would be like offset zero here. Um, that might read a little bit better. It's like, okay, it's the first thing in the argument vector instead of some weird tokens thing that we're not offsetting from. So I can see if this works and we can go from there if it does. If it doesn't compile, then it doesn't compile. PR's not right. Um, yeah, we don't have is space, that's fine. I put PR a couple times. Just make sure it compiles other than the space. Yeah, okay. So let's say we do want to make an is space character. That would be in C type, so I can do that. Um, we'll go to include C, C type dot H. And we can open that up and make a C type file. I guess these will be, I think C type is literally for handling single characters. Character tests and conversions on the integer because character C is promoted to int. So I guess they take an integer, integer C. I might just take them in as character though. Character though. Um, character functions to operate or handle individual characters. Although they should take an int. So this isn't strictly standard conforming. Um, but that's okay. I will have this, I guess, return a boolean, because this will really be checking true or false for space, at least. So bool is space, and I don't want to mess with it, so we'll do constant, argc, and we can do these with, like, one-liners, since it's returning really true or false if c equals a character, right, in this case. But I can do multiple. So if it's a space or it's a new line... We'll say or it's a carriage return or a well, new line or yeah a line feed or a carriage return or a tab or a vertical tab which I've never used or seen used in my life but I'm sure that people do use them sometimes. Uh, we'll do or c equals I like or over here. Although it's kind of cut off a little bit. So space, line feed, carriage return, horizontal vertical tab, we'll do or backspace. There might be others we can add later, but if any one of those is true, we'll say it's a space or white space character. Let's see a white space character. And if it's not, then we'll do this, and it'll be good. So this is using bool, so I should include that. 
Okay, let's hope that works. I mean, it'll at least compile, right? Except I lied, it won't compile. Implicit declaration, because I don't have C type included in the kernel, so let's do that. Even though I just added it, we'll do that and see if it now compiles, and it does. So let's compile it again to not have any file table mishaps. Would I just compile it twice? Did I do make and make? I probably did. Yeah, I did. <laughs> just compile it five times, it'll work. We're just testing things. We're testing uh, probability. That's, that's all we're doing. So what did I just change? What was the first one down here? Because my memory is that of a, a NAT. Um, directory, okay. Hey, directory works. <laughs> so we captured argc and argv. We could print those out. That would probably be better, right? Shutdown doesn't work because we're not capturing the tokens anymore from all this, but the argv does capture, which is good. Um, just do go to next, um, space, or end of string. We'll just do this. So these should all work now with argv. I had a thought and it went away, which is not great. Um, oh, I was going to print it out. Let's just, we'll do that for testing. Testing. I'll do testing slash debugging. Print out argc argv. So this we can do for int, I don't know, i. I use i in other places, but I think it'll be scoped to here, so it's fine. So we'll do i equals zero. i less than argc, i plus plus, because argc will be... Uh, one based indexing, argv will be zero. I keep saying that so I remember because <laughs> that's how it works. And then we can do printf. We'll do percent s. We'll do arg um, percent d percent s. There we go. We can do that. And I'll do carriage return. So it goes to the start of the line, then goes down. And now that I have printf, I can do this. And now we're writing almost idiomatic c. Hey, look at that. Argv, arg c. So the first one will be zero, and then argv offset zero, and then one, and argv offset one. Okay. Well, this won't be argc. This will be i, because we're going up to argc. So be argument zero, argv offset zero, argument one, argv offset one. Okay. Yeah, we can do that. And that'll go to directory. If we can also stop, and maybe right now just do continue to go back to the prompt. And then I'll get rid of this in a second when it looks okay. This is just a kind of basic test here. This is also how I would test printing these things out in a C program. And like a regular one outside of this OS, I would probably just write this loop from main, taking in int argc and character star argv. So if I type in like something directory, there should only be one argument directory. Arg0 and s. Well, s is not correct. <laughs> Oh, I thought argv would be, would be correct. That's because this is i. Oh, I'll do put c as well. We'll print the new line first. Actually, I'll do printf. All right, we'll do new line first so it's on its own line. And then, and then we'll do this. And we'll put an i in the right spot so I don't look like a, a idiot doo-doo head. All right, we'll make it smaller. So directory should only be one. Yeah, the argument count is zero. We entered directory. If we do, if we had something later, then we took in arguments to directory, like some kind of long file path. Then we should have argument zero directory. Then we skip the space and get the start of the next one, which would be argument one. Okay, if we called the editor with something like a file name, we have editor and file name. Maybe we have a better calculator and we can do stuff at the screen. Um, I'll just enter in space delimited so that it puts in multiple arguments here. Just so we have argc counting. We don't have it limited to 10. If we, if we go past 10, it'll probably make an error or something, but <laughs> I only have 10 arguments that I can put into the argument vector, so I should try to limit that um, in code somehow. But anyway, so the first argument, then the second, third, fourth, fifth, sixth, seventh, eighth, so zero based, zero to seven. If we did the same thing and had it as one, then, or this, so this should be zero, one, two, three. Yeah, so I mean, that, that shows that it's working, right? So I think that makes sense. 
just a basic test. So we can replace all these token things with argv, and then we can replace other things or just remove them from the kernel to simplify stuff. And that is good. And then I'll add it to uh, where we call a program. So, but right now I'll just change all these things to take in argz, uh, yeah, argv zero and, and stuff. Just, I think makes more sense, simplifies it a little bit. All the stuff should work. This is actually easier than I thought it would be, except for these things, because they take in tokens, so never mind. <laughs> tokens plus 10 is offsetting to the second token in the array. Because I'm technically saying it is equivalent-ish to a 2, 2D array, 510, and it's 50 overall, but I want to get rid of that and not do this jank. So what, what am I doing here? I'm taking tokens plus 10, so I'm pointing to the second token, and I'm writing it into token file name one, according to the token length of one, which is zero offset, so that's the second token that was entered. So what I should be able to do, this is basically string copy. So if we say it was string copy into token file name one um, from tokens pointer, Assuming we had a null terminated string here, that would work. We didn't before, which is why I had to do this nonsense, but <laughs> assuming we had it like this, now that they are null terminated with the argument vector strings, we should be able to copy into token file name one, um, argument vector one. Argument vector zero would be the programmer command, and then start into the second one, it would be in this case the file name, so that would be argv1. Um, that's still a little off, I'd rather not use an extra argument at all, or an extra variable at all, if I can help it. But that should take care of that. So what we can do is delete. If we're taking in token file name one and it's actually argv1, then I'm just going to put an argv1 here. And the length of argv1, since it's a null terminated string that that's going to be pointing to, we can do string length argv1. And that should be a simpler way of handling that. I need another parenthesis. Then I can get rid of this crap. We don't need, yeah. It, it won't be 10 character max. We don't need that. Um, so that makes it a lot simpler. Especially with using this argument vector. It seems more, I keep saying idiomatic, but to me that's how I would use the arguments if I'm taking them in from the command line. This is closer to what you'd want to do probably in, in straight C, so. I think that looks a little better. That's for delete file, so I can see if delete file works to see if that code change works there, and we can go with that for the other stuff that takes in multiple args, or at least one. So we can delete, we'll say test font. Okay, so I have an issue where the file table doesn't print like I had a long time ago, so I'm glad that I have issues I haven't reserved or I haven't fixed permanently, that's good. I'm just seeing if a reboot brings it back. So a reboot brings it back. Which is good. Free space works. So I think the issue um, that I had a while back was I couldn't delete things in the middle of the list, but I could at the end. So if I try deleting third stage, no, that doesn't work either. Okay. I thought before I could delete something at the end and it would still load all right, but that, that doesn't. So, oh well. Um, we'll have to look at that, which is not great. Not great to do. Uh, I'll do bug fix. Well, I'll just call it to do. It should be a bug. It is a bug. Fix deleting erasing file table from directory command until reboot. I'll write that down actually so I research it after this. Okay, if I write things down I remember them better so that's why I write it down physically, pencil and paper. That stuff's always good. Pencil and eraser and paper. <laughs> it works. And if you have other tasks, just like to-do list items that you can cross off, you can have smaller paper. <laughs> but anyway, I don't have a smaller pencil or else I would keep doing that uh, running joke right now, but it's not. So, um, so that, I mean, that delete does work. It's just kind of buggy, but it does work, right? So ship it. <laughs> it's done. Ship it. Now we can do the same thing, though, down here. For rename, except it takes two tokens, one at offset 10, so the second one, offset 20, the third one. So we're renaming 
file name one, which is the the second token. So this would be argv1 for tokens length one, which would be string length of argv1. And file name two is offset 20. That's the third one, which is argv2. And tokens length will be string length, argv2. So stuff's a lot easier with C standard library functions. Who knew? You just had to write them yourself first. <laughs> you don't have to, but I wanted to, so. so that should be all right. So I wonder if rename, actually, I wonder if rename erases the file table as well until reboot, because that would be fun. So if I want to rename test font to uh, blah, blah. No, that makes blah, blah. So it's just delete. So it's something with writing the change file table, but rename doesn't break it. So I don't know. That's something to research. But that does work, so that's good. Print memory map. These are still going to be argv0 for the first argument. Um, change colors. That'll be fine. That's converting down here. Yep, because I did that last time. Okay. Change font. Change... I'm just making sure change colors doesn't take in another um, another argument like rename and delete did up here. Because change font does. Okay. Because change font takes in the file name, so that would make sense. So we would want to check. Tokens plus 10 would be... What was the first? What was the second argument? So this would be argv1. And the length of that. Okay, so we'll check that if it exists, not found. Otherwise, this is the file table record plus 10, not the arguments, so that's fine. We want a string copy. End it and then do, I think this is only for the purpose of load file, so we can change that. Load file, again, is taking an argv1 because we're loading it. And it is null terminated, so we don't need to do this. Garbage. Take the length of that. So I don't need any of that actually, which is good. And then we'll say we loaded it and it's good or it's not good, we'll have an error. So I'll just check that that works. This is, these are my unit tests, right? So change font, if we don't do anything, it should say, yeah, well, we didn't put anything in, so it wouldn't be found, but if we put in, we want to change to the test font. Uh, font loaded null, so that's not good. That means it didn't find it. <laughs> but it did find it because it printed it out. Um, oh, because I have token file name one. Okay, so the null is working though, which is cool. So that is from, just so I don't forget, and then I show this because I don't remember if I had it happen on, on the last video or not. If there isn't a string to print in print s, well, sorry, in print f for the percent s, if there isn't a string here, if it's bad, if it isn't pointing to anything, then it just sets it equal to the string null, and that's what printed out. So the user can see, hey, that's not a valid string. So that did help in this case. But this would be argv1, because that is what we're loading. So that's good. It's good that it gave me that error that I can accurately explain. So if I change it to test font, it should say font loaded test font. And I do need to figure out cursor stuff here to, you know, put it down or clear the screen before I print because that looks a little bad. But other than that, we can clear the screen anyway and do stuff. So not too much of an issue. Um, these won't be dealing with tokens for the sleep command. First thing will be argv0 and this will be argv1 argv1. So we'll put in like sleep 10 and argv1 will be 10 and then we'll sleep for 10 seconds, which would be a while. Or we can do millisecond sleep for 10, which won't be as much of a while. Let's be zero. No, let's go back. Okay. Show the date time. This has 50 and using the old print string. I don't have a way of saving and restoring variables 
like from sending terminal control codes. So this might have to stay for now, but that'll be something. Oh, I already put, I already put last time, make a to-do for that. I forgot I wrote this to-do. <laughs> I already did this last time. Make something to save or restore. So yeah, I already know that that's an issue. Okay. Never mind. I'm just repeating myself. I'm not crazy just yet. I'm just slightly senile. Okay, searching for a file name if we want to load the file. Except we won't check command string. That's technically checking the zero offset, which is the first thing the user entered, I guess. So we'll check argv zero. And the length of that would be string length. See if they entered in anything. And yeah, the benefit of doing it this way also is see before I just had to put in command string. I mean, it had to be this way, which is a zero offset from here. It didn't have to be this way. I was just a bad programmer. Um, but what, what you could put in now, and maybe you could before, is like a bunch of spaces before the first argument, and it would work. So now now that works. I don't know if that worked before. It might have, though. But now now that would work. You're not limited to starting with the thing. You can put in spaces, and then, the th I don't know, if you have weird input or something, that should be more more tolerant now. Um, those sentences didn't didn't sound right. <laughs> Just making sure everything else looks okay. We aren't dealing with tokens like we are here again. We want to load the file that we put in in this case. Or we won't load it and give an error. We loaded it and we're going to here. Uh, eventually I want to put in stuff in here. I could do it now, though. If I want to send argc and argv to a program, which is why I've put this to do right here, that's cool. Uh, technically, this is like a void pointer. I mean, if I did it differently, I would have like ints. Like this uh, function pointer. Um, you know, arg1, arg2, whatever. With their data types, you know, type2. But I don't have generics in C, except we do now since C11 we have generic, but I'm not going to worry about that right now. <laughs> um, but this is how you do, you know, a normal declaration. This is kind of like an inline anonymous or whatever. It's not a lambda, but it's like this is a function pointer returning void and taking void as arguments. And I'm calling entry point as the function pointer name, and I'm calling it with no arguments. So I can change that if I want to do the, like the C main equivalent event arg c character star star arg v i'll write it multiple ways um, we can change this to int and this can be int arg c and character i'll do it like an array and show you know technically i'm going to use this semantically as an array of strings um, we're calling entry point and we will call entry point with the arguments that we have set up as parameters now of arg c and arg v so there we go. I don't have to do that to do. That is kind of, that's how it'll work. I'll have to change the function signatures or prototypes, whatever you want to call it, for editor and calculator. I don't have to, but I should to match up with this. But I think it'll work by, by default. It'll just have extra stuff on the stack that's being called. Yeah, that the, the compiler sets up. But if I want to change the function signatures to this, I can, and it should still work. So let me try that actually. I'll try that down for editor. Instead of doing void, editor main void, we'll do int editor main, and we'll take in int arg c and characters. Asterisk arg v brackets. And it doesn't like it. Non void function does not return a value. Yeah, let's just return. It's the normal c return zero, which it should return by default, but it says it's not right. I'll just return a zero at the end of this editor main function. And it compiles all right. Let's see if that loads. It loads. Calculator does not have the signature, so let's test and see if it still runs. It does, and it returns to the kernel. I still have some cursor position things I have to work out, but that's all right. But the editor takes in these new arguments on the stack, and it, it will behave the same. Just enter in a file there. It'll behave the same, 
but I'm just showing that it works the same. We're just formally giving it and passing it arguments now, which is cool. So we can do stuff with those arguments, which I'll do in a, a few minutes, but right now I'll continue changing the kernel here. Where needed, if needed. I guess if I deleted the tokens related like variables, then the compiler would tell me where I use them so I know where else to look. Uh, but that's all right. I don't think I need it anywhere else actually, which is good. So we'll see. I mean, it compiles. So if I take out this stuff that I'm not using anymore, just get rid of it and go down because I was mem setting some of those here. I don't need to mem set these anymore. We can just mem set command string. See if anything broke. Stuff, stuff did break. So 231. So 231 capital G. Give me down here. But let's get rid of the token stuff. Command string pointer I'm still using. I shouldn't really need this. I can just loop through command string and like offset by I or something. I mean, I could change to where I do something like argv would equal this. If we're looping through down here and we just want to offset by I, then I think this would work for adding to the argument vector. But I know this works right now, so it's not too bad. And I can change that if it saves some lines on a, some other day. But we're just, you know, reducing lines of code. I don't know if the kernel was below 2F sectors or not before. Hopefully these are less bytes than it used to be. <laughs> it's under 800 lines now, so that's cool. Not that that's an objectively good or bad measure of anything. It's just interesting for me to note. Ideally, I'd want the shell that I'm using to be like a separate program that's loaded as like the first thing. Not that I want to copy Unix or anything, but just I think that makes sense conceptually as a... A PID, a process ID one, the first thing that's going to run that the user takes and sends input to would be the shell. So that could be like a separate program and then the user could write their own and it could be more modular. They could, you know, use their own shell and stuff like that. I think that would be interesting. That's something I may want to move towards as we go forward. I think that would be cool. Um, but I'm just making sure stuff still boots in that, uh, that the arguments are still good. So we have this. So what I could do is pass something on the command line, something that we don't have. And the editor doesn't use the argument, so it doesn't matter, but it should be being passed on the stack. Um, but okay, I think we're good with the editor now. Simplified it a little bit, and I'm using argument C and argument V. Hey, that's cool. Don't need to change that. Fix deleting. I do have to fix that. I'm going to research that later. Right now, I'm just going to do basic changes to the editor. And that will be for using argc and argv. Yeah, within here. So instead of loading a file, if input is create new, um, I'm going to change to where if we pass in, if we pass in an argument or more, but I'll probably just ignore additional ones and only take the first one. Maybe later, if you pass in multiple files, we can have like separate windows or buffers open for those, but that's a bit advanced for me right now. So <laughs> I'll say if you pass in the editor with a file name, we're going to open and edit that file. If you pass the editor without any file names, you just call it, then we'll go to create a new file, which is what we're doing currently. So I'm going to do that. So I'm going to put if did not pass any args, any arguments to editor, we'll do edit new file. I'll just call it that. So instead of input character create new, let's, if argc is less than, if it's less than one, well, it'll be one by default because that'll be editor. So if it's less than two, then the only thing we'll have is the editor. Yeah, because that would be argc zero and argc one would be the file name. So, okay. Oh, well, sorry. The editor would be argc one. Argv offset zero would be the string editor argv offset one or argc two would be a file name if they passed in one. So if this is less than two, they didn't pass in a file name. We're just going to go on to edit a new file, which will just be the current screen that says bin file or other file. You press B or O and it opens the editor. So else we're loading a file and I want to load the file that they pass in on the command line. So I will pass in argv 
one. So if they call this with, keep doing that, if they call this with editor file name, then argv1 would be this file name string. So it'll pass in that string to editor load file and we can load it. So that's what I'm gonna try to do here. That shouldn't need any other things. Initial screen clear, we don't need to do because I think stuff will, this will clear the screen anyway. And editor load file, I'm going to get rid of this stuff and that'll end up clearing the screen. So we don't need to do it before then. And don't need to print the option string because I'm getting rid of that. We'll handle it. Auto magically, <laughs> as they say. I don't think I need to mess with any of this other stuff, though. No, because if they answer in B, we're, we're going to assume it's a bin and go to the hex. Otherwise, we'll assume it's text. Okay, so that should be fine. Editor load file, though, we will take in a file name to load. This could be constant, but I think it'll give me an error because argv is not constant or something, or it's a un8. Maybe that'll work though. I figure it would give me an error. Too many arguments. So this is at line 40, it's declared. Oh, because that's a forward. Yeah, I have these as forward declarations. Yeah, let's do that here. Can I enter in this? Yeah, okay, well that. Um, no, nah, I won't run it yet until I make the changes, but that does compile so far. So we don't need to choose a file name to load and go through the screen because we'll be passing it on the command line, which will be simpler. Let me get rid of the while loop actually. And I won't print the file table. We won't choose a file name. We won't input the file name to load that's already been input before or when editor was called. We will check what they entered, which will be file name, and we can get the length of that because it'll be zero, it'll be null terminated. So that'll be better than hard coding the length. Don't need to have that to do. Um, editor file name is used in you know multiple places, so I'll probably copy it to there. Let me do that. Save file name. Later on, I don't want to have you know duplicate variables and things, but right now that's that's okay easy enough to do the one line the one liner so we'll check if that exists if it does exist we'll malloc a size for it and we want to load it so we will load it calling string length a lot but that's all right it's not too bad we can probably save the name um, save the length of the name and not have to recompute it by calling these things every time. That would be better, but that's fine. File address. We're getting the address. File type um, is a return parameter, so that's okay. Okay, so instead of breaking, we'll go on. I'm going to reverse this. We'll say if it didn't load the file, we'll get the error. I'll get the key, I'll clear the screen, and we'll go back. <laughs> Put this inside of a, a scope. So let's say if the file did not load, I'm gonna write the error message, I'm gonna take a key, and when I get the key, I'm gonna clear the screen, and I'm gonna return. I'll just return to the caller, which will be the kernel in this case, but um, return to caller after failure. Sad face. All right, but if it did work, we'll go on. So I'll get rid of that. We'll have the file type. If it's bin, we'll go to bin. If it's text, we'll go to text. That should all be fine. Yeah, if it's bin, we'll go to bin. Text, we'll go to text. I don't think I have to change anything else. And it should load the respective editor, so that might be all I need to change here, and it should work. Should be in the keyword there. Passing constant to UNAT pointer. Ooh. So check file name takes a UNAT. Okay. So if I don't want that warning, I can get rid of the constant. Or cast it away. <laughs> Wilson style. Wilson. 
but that's okay. It gets rid of the error if it's not constant, even though the types aren't the same, so that's interesting, but <laughs> that's fine. I think it was only because of the constant qualifier. Check file name doesn't have a constant on that, or if it does have a constant, it's a UNAT and not a character, but whatever. Unsigned character may have fixed that warning, but that's fine. Yeah, so let's let's test that out. If I call editor with a file, let's say file table as the second thing here, it should open the file table. Yeah, whereas before we had to go to the load file screen and type it in, and that was still kind of buggy and stuff. So that works good. That works better. If we call it with nothing, it should ask us what file type. So I'll say a text file and other type. We'll do test and we'll save that normally. Say it's a C file, we'll go back, we have this, we're like, oh, let's rename it or something because I don't like the name test file one. So let's rename to test F. That's there. So now we do editor on test F. We open the file. Let's say put a new line. I don't like that. That's actually not great. <laughs> Might have some issues here because that doesn't look, uh, look particularly good. I have some issues with uh, the malloc and stuff. Okay, well, that's good to know. If I run it again, I have malloc issues to look into. That's always fun. It could have been because of the rename and stuff too. I don't know. Could be because of issues here where I'm loading the file, but I'm not mallocing the data for the file. That could be it. Although it should be all right. If I do line two, I'm just trying to check if an update will work and I save it and I go back. You know, it's... It saves it on another line. Oh, this is not good at all. What if I delete? What happens? That shouldn't have named it the same thing. <laughs> oh, I named it test F and space space and C. That's why. Okay, we're, you know what? We're just going to scrap this right now. Let's just scrap that. <laughs> Let's just try a better test that paints me in a better light like I know what I'm doing. Let's just do that. Oh, let's, let's not rename it, because maybe that broke everything, so we'll just do this. It still doesn't work, but whatever. I'll save it, we'll go back. I just wanted to make sure that it took in the, the stuff, and it kind of didn't. It kind of got rid of the first line. What if I save that again? Uh, no, it's not really saving correctly. Well, that's good. I think I have some malloc and other issues to look through, but I mean, as far as calling it with a file and having it open that file to edit, that part seems to be all right. <laughs> Creating a new file. I didn't try to make a binary file. Creating a new file seems to work all right. So, I mean, uh, did I call that test file one? I don't think I did. I might have though. What if I save? Oh, I didn't save it, that's why. We'll do test bin 001. Okay, so it saves it and it seems to open them. Yeah, it, op it opens the files all right. Okay, we just had some issue with opening and saving files, which is interesting. New file gets allocated a buffer, that is all right. Else we'll load it. So on load file, it should find it. It allocates the file size. Is it because I don't free that size? But the kernel frees memory if we didn't do it. We don't get an error message. It's not a bin. The text file. So I don't see what the problem is immediately. I'll have to research and debug further. Uh, but the stuff that I wanted to do, I got done. <laughs> I have a couple bugs, so I'm going to try to debug those and get back. As far as the deleting and editing these files is kind of iffy, but... Uh, okay, so... I don't really know what all I did other than just adding an else condition to if the file was found with an editor load file, the file we passed in on the command line. I just added an else and then just copied this <laughs> to add a load file error in case we didn't have anything. So that's all I did. Um, it seems to have worked. Although, like I said, I don't think I changed anything, really. 
that I wasn't doing before with like testing. Uh, watch it not work now, of course, right? So if I put in something and we put in the test file, we put in an extension, I can run it from here. We can load it now in the editor. It loads it. If I go to the end of the line, let's put in line two, spell it wrong, of course. Um, it saved it. Save the data. So I must say it must be some series of keystrokes that's like not right, right? Not right, right? <laughs> Something I don't I don't really know. I can delete. And line three. I can update, I can go back. I'm not sure what the issue is. Because it saves it. Uh, let's try calling it with something that doesn't exist, right? Editor file name. That doesn't exist. It says load file error occurred. I guess I'll press a keystroke. It goes back. We didn't have a memory leak from that. Nope. We can still do this. Yeah, I don't know what that issue was, but it's, it's there. Um, for the delete file... It's not good that I don't know what the issue is. I could put, actually, I could put something else in the load file error message. Load file error occurred. Let me put this. Load file error occurred. Press any key to go back. Because that'll just look a little bit better. I think. If I do like... Yeah, if I do editor file name, it'll say load file error occurred, press any key to go back, and it'll go back. So that, that'll work. Uh, the delete file. I'm not really sure what the issue is here, but I just wanted to, before I made changes, I wanted to start recording. So <laughs> um, I think part of the issue is that I'm just writing to an arbitrary location for nulls. Maybe that's messing stuff up. I am writing. 1,000 is where the file table is. That should be okay, although I don't want that to be hard-coded forever. Filling out the file table record should be all right as well. Writing the zeroed out data to disk from 20,000 and writing to 20,000 I think is bad, so what I'm going to do is hopefully not break too many things, but <laughs> include standard I.O. within here. Okay, so I think a lot of the issues with delete file was, uh, well, one, I'm not including standard live in here when I'm using malloc, uh, but two, I think it's because I have some weird, you know, I sort of punted having a kernel malloc implementation till later, sort of, and I, I have it at 300,000 in hex in the kernel, and it should have been taken from that, and that's all well and good, but I, I ended up just removing the code because I feel like I can write the changed file table to disk and it'll say there's free space in the file table. And then when I save a file, it'll save it at the first available free space. So what this does do is fragment the files right now because I can save a file that's smaller than a file that was deleted and it'll take up that record in the file table, but it won't take up all the space. So the other files will still be at the right spaces, but we'll have fragments of, of free space and that's something to look at later. But if I just take out all the code, it does work. So that's the best. The best code is no code, right? That's what businesses seem to think. So what exactly did I change here? Starting sector and file size. I'm writing the file, the changed file table entry, you know. And then all I'm doing is writing the file table to disk. I'm not making any nulls. I'm not writing nulls to 20,000 or any malloc data. I'm just writing the file table. That's all I'm doing here. So that ends up making it simpler. Uh, my editor is still buggy, but it was probably buggy before. It's always been buggy, right? Really, but... Um, you know, if I delete test font or anything in the middle or at the end of the list, it does delete it, and we have a free space now. So if I make a file in the editor... If I make a new file here, the first time I open and make one, the editor is pretty much fine. If I go back... I can see that test file took over the free space in the disk. It was only one sector, though, whereas before I think it was four sectors. So again, yeah, we're going to have a fragmented sort of... We're not fully utilizing all the disk space, um, so that might come into issue later. But if I open the file, you know, and I edit it, 
it's still buggy. One, it says length five, whereas before it was length four, because I only have four characters. So I know something's wrong right off the bat. Uh, two, if I go to the end and hit enter, it copies TST for some reason, but not the E. I don't know what's going on there. And if I go back and like look at it, it you know, it's it's good it doesn't include the second line, but if I make a second line, um, of course now it works, right? Uh, no, if I make a second line, it ignores the first one, so I don't really know. It could be that when I load a file here and it prints it, that like that's the memory that it looks at when I open the editor and go to I don't know. So, so something's weird there. I don't like it. It's not great, but so my editor right now is a write once and read many, but not an edit. <laughs> you know, I can write the file once, I can read the file, I can't edit the file. I can delete it and remake it. I guess that's how you edit files currently. Yeah, that's something to look at later. I do want to change the editor because I have some... I, I just don't like how it's laid out. And I, I've gotten tired of it, but... As far as this episode, even though it's buggy, I hate that I'm leaving things in buggy states. It really bothers me. But even even given those things, um, I did accomplish what I want to accomplish as far as argc and argv and getting it to work within programs. Passing it to the programs from the kernel. And the editor can load a file, it's just buggy, so, oh well. <laughs> something with the text editor functions or something in there. Hey, alright, I'm gonna record the end of this video again, <laughs> if it's weird or spliced together odd later. But, uh, okay, if you're seeing this, hey, I got the editor slightly less buggy, at least from testing right now, before I'm about to go to bed, so. An editor load file in this function here in the editor. I think I marked all my lines with new. Basically, I changed when it first loads a text file. If we pass in a file name and it loads, you know, previously existing text file, I changed some things here where instead of resetting the file pointer, I mean, we get it to begin with up here when we do malloc and load it to that address. So I'm getting rid of that. So when I load the file bytes to the screen, instead of using the file pointer directly, I'm offsetting from the pointer with I inside of this loop. So this used to be, all, all these things that say file pointer i used to be like star file pointer without the subscript, right? Without the, uh, the offset there. I just, I changed that and then I think where it had 0x0a, or sorry, this was 0x00. I changed that to just say, you know, the null character. This was 0a, but I changed that to be new line. Just because it's shorter and reads better. Um, and then, yeah, so file pointer i, that used to be star file pointer. And then here, file pointer i, and then down here, file pointer i. Just going through all the changes. And then instead of incrementing the file pointer, we're offsetting with i, so we don't need to do that. Okay, go down. I don't need to go back by the offset because I'm using i. So I commented that out. This line, change this to new line, change this to subscript i. I think subscript is the right way to say that right. Actually, I think this this was a while loop. So it was while star file pointer is not 0x0a and file offset not equal to file length bytes. So I changed this to a for loop using i. Offsetting from file pointer i not equal to new line. This comparison is the same, i++ plus plus at the end, however. And then I don't need to increment file pointer. So this makes the file a little bit shorter as well. Um, and this... I don't know why I put new. I think I was going to comment this out, but I didn't end up commenting it out. The reason I increment to begin with is so I have an extra character on the end if I want to make a new line or something. Um, but it doesn't count in the file data, so that's okay. And then since I didn't move the file pointer, I just offset from it with I. I don't have to reduce the offset there. So I'll just set it to zero. That's fine. And we go to the text editor. So I didn't change anything else. That's just when we first load a file that we run. When we first load a file that previously exists, then we load it into the editor. So let me just make, you know, that stuff right quick. We don't have anything. But I make a file. That's fine. This might not work because I'm giving it another name, but maybe it will. I'll do the same test I did before. We'll load it. It does that. So if I load it within the editor, because it exists now, 
length five, size four, I press end, still okay. Enter, it's still okay. I can put line two, like it's still, it works. It works correctly. I don't know why. <laughs> again, it's maybe something that I say again when I haven't even previously said the thing that I'm saying again. I may mention this in the last video, I think. It could be the editor, it could be like, well, it's not them. It could be the compiler making things weird with pointers in terms of setting it to optimize for size or some other flags that I need to enable to catch other warnings and things. I'm not sure. Not sure what it is, but to, pr to prove that that does work, we can print it out and it prints the line two now. So I can edit and it goes back and it gets the right, the correct like file stuff. We can even, you know, insert in middle, mid dial <laughs> um, of line two and save it and return. and load it and it's there. So I don't know. I mean, I don't know whether to, at this point, I don't know whether to feel <laughs> crazy or not because I, on, on the one hand, I know I write buggy stuff and I try to fix it, but on the other hand, it's, it seems to not be like that error prone to begin with. Like my logic seems sound because I write effectively the same code logic wise that I can see the same exact code. I'm just, <laughs> offsetting from the start of an array with the, you know, a subscript for the array instead of using the pointer itself. And it is a UN8T, you know, file pointer, wherever it's initially gotten somewhere up here. Although I think it, it may also be due to being a global variable. That could be it. It may be something weird with global variables. That could definitely be it because I've had some issues. That's why these are static, for example. So it could be something with that. But this is just a byte-sized pointer. So it shouldn't be anything with pointer arithmetic. So I don't know. I think the logic's the exact same, but this makes it work, and that's why I feel like I'm going crazy. So <laughs> anyway, I am going to go to sleep so I don't go more crazy tomorrow. If I end up using this video, oh, sorry, this part I'm recording right now is the ending and not the previous part, then I'm planning on doing the file system next, and the next video may just be an overview and maybe a starter program to build the file system. It'll be kind of like ext2 from Linux from Unix, but it'll be sort of a subset of ext2, maybe kind of like the Minix file system, probably worse than both. So my, my test name for the file system is worse FS, because if you can think of a file system, this one's worse, or probably worse. But uh, yeah, that's what I'm, I'm planning on doing next. And then if I get file system stuff worked out before the end of the year, however long it takes me, I will uh, do some other sound things like playing PCM, uncompressed 8-bit PCM playback for the PC speaker on the laptop, do graphics or other editor changes and things to hopefully make it less buggy and work better. And yeah, I'll go from there. So playing on the file system next, LBA support, directories, sort of like ext2, kind of with, you know, the boot block and super block and the inodes and the bitmaps and everything. Hopefully at least having some kind of program to make the file system to replace the file table and load stuff into and set up the directory structures and inodes and everything. Um, if not going from there and, you know, implementing it in the OS. So we'll see. That might take me a while, but I'll try to do that next. And uh, yeah, thanks for watching. Really do appreciate it. Thanks, and I will see you on the next one.